Hi everyone, welcome to the TO Pro Upgrade Features Walkthrough video. My name is Neil, I am the lead developer of TO Pro Tournament Organizer. This video is for experienced users of TO Pro, those who have used the old version called TO Tournament Organizer in the past. We're going to walk through a couple of new features and changes to the program that old users will want to be especially sure to note. So this video is not for you if you have never used TO in the past. So if you're new to TO Pro, make sure to check out some of the other videos on our YouTube channel. But if you have used it in the past, this is definitely the video for you. So we're going to get into about five new features to note. Uh, the first one is going to be the new look. Okay, so obviously the program has gotten a pretty big UI overhaul. It doesn't look like something that was written in Windows 98. Uh, it's a modern Windows 7, Windows 8 kind of look to it. Um, it might not seem like a big deal, but be honest, when people are at your tournament looking at whatever software you're running, especially on the bracket side of things, they're going to be more impressed and think more highly of your tournament to see a professional looking program running there. It's uh, definitely a good thing, it doesn't get in the way, and as you'll see, we've retuned a lot of the UI to be more natural to use and more easy to understand for new tournament organizers, and that, of course, is to the benefit of everyone. So, the first big change is that we no longer have the four small tabs at the top of the screen for tournament events, player sensations. We made them a little larger with icons uh, so that you can actually understand what they all represent. Uh, the e bigger change is that events now just pop down from this menu right here. You can see I have three events at this tournament. I don't have to go into nested tabs in order to access them. It's a little simpler to jump around between them. But otherwise, the player stations, tournament tabs all act the same way as you're used to in the past. If I go ahead and look at my example of elimination bracket, you'll see the new bracket style that we've got going. It's no longer just a bunch of blue lines all over the place. Looks a little nicer. Things flow a little better. Um, yeah, so new features would be at the top of the bracket, this little bar that gives you which round each match is in. It's very convenient. If I had a larger bracket and I scrolled down, that bar would still remain at the top of the window, so I could always know just by looking at a match that right here, match B is in the semis of winner's bracket. Nice and easy. Uh, at the bottom, we're showing all the TVs that are currently in use of the tournament. If I go ahead and schedule a match by clicking this Assign Match button, I choose my TV, and you'll see at the bottom left, now it shows up as yellow being in use. If I need to find who's on that TV, I just click it, it takes me to the match. There it is. So all the stuff that you're used to, from the old version of the TO in terms of double clicking still works to advance people. Um, you can single click a match and now we get this sort of handy toolbox on the right. It tells us what round we're in, who the players are, how long they've been waiting for this match to be scheduled, if we have shortcuts to assign them to a TV, or just pick a winner from the start. You can attach notes, things like that. You will see more customization options later on. Uh, but this sort of represents the old hover over menu that you would get. You just click and now you get this and it has all the same information as before. One thing that you're going to want to note, in order to swap players in the first round, this used to be a click and drag operation, but we found that a lot of tournament hosts were doing that on accident as they were trying to scroll around the bra bracket. So now it's a multi-click operation. You select the match, click on the player that you want to swap. I want to swap Joe out. Click Swap Position choose who you want to swap him with. Now it says Joe will be swapped with Sean. OK. Boom, now they're in opposite positions. You'll notice that the match between Hugo and Joe is no longer scheduled on the, on the TV because, of course, they're no longer playing. So now I can double-click Joe because obviously he would beat Mango and then advance the bracket that way. Uh, click to scroll around. All the features that you used to in the past, I can click on this letter A right here to jump to loser side where that person's going to end up. And otherwise, it works basically the same as before. Yeah. Here you can see TO Pro's new round robin bracket view. This is uh, a bracket with two pools. One of them has already been filled out. One of them, I've only got one match filled out. It looks the uh, same layout as before in terms of the grid shape, just looks a little nicer. And you still read it as before, where this match right here between Joe and Sean this is from Joe's point of view, so if I double-click this match, it's going to assume that Joe won. Of course, I can switch that and say that Sean won. And now it's going to update the bracket to show that Joe lost his match with Sean, because that's his row, but Sean won his match with Joe, because that's his row. 
Otherwise, it works exactly the same. Once your pool is all filled out, you'll get the results over here on the right. You would break ties by going to the results menu if there were any ties, but we obviously we don't have any here yet. And uh, things are going to work out pretty much the same. Now, this options menu has a few options. We can click it to save images of all the pools. This option <laughs> finally works. Uh, it's going to dump, in this case, two images into this directory. Uh, TO Pro example. It's going to dump uh, two images called 1 and 2 into that directory so that you can post those to your favorite image hosting solution, and that way you can share your pools with people on the internet. Um, I think that's about it for round robin brackets. Finally, we have single elimination brackets. Looks very much like the double elimination brackets, so we're not going to spend a whole lot of time here. Uh, some changes are this options button, which you see on all the different brackets. It's a collection of all the various checkboxes that used to be in the old TO. Uh, things like showing player seeds or ignoring double mouse clicks so you can't accidentally adjust a bracket if you don't want to. You can also save the bracket image from here, just like the round robin brackets. Um, this box here, the show box, allows you to change what player fields are actually shown on the bracket. If, for example, I wanted to look at my bracket and make sure I didn't have people from the same region playing first round, I could select location. And now I see that I got Midwest and a SoCal player, and then an East Coast and a SoCal player. And any players that don't actually have that information in their uh, registration are just shown with their names in brackets. You can do that with their real name if you, for some reason you want to do that. When you do team events, you can sh have them show the team name or the names of an individual player on the teams, that kind of thing. Uh, we've still got our zoom in, zoom out buttons over here, which are very convenient. And yeah, otherwise, single elimination brackets, same feature set as the double elimination. Another cool feature for the new bracket view, uh, obviously this new layout wastes quite a bit of space up at the top, this upper right hand corner. On a laptop screen, that can make your bracket really small, so we added this full screen button, which gets rid of all the excessive UI stuff, makes your bracket much larger, gives you almost a full screen experience, just like on a browser. So keep that in mind when you're using a laptop or other small screen and you just feel like you can't quite see enough of the bracket. The next big set of upgrades is going to involve Twitter integration in TO Pro. Now while your tournament is running, you can configure TO Pro to automatically post your Twitter account about the progress of the tournament. You can have it post results from matches, you can have it post bracket images every 5 to 10 minutes. You can just type away and have it post whatever you want it to. Uh, all kinds of stuff. So it's very convenient. I just go to the tools Twitter menu. I can type in whatever I want. And that will post to my Twitter account after I configure it. You do need to go through a step where you open up a browser and uh, TO Pro guides you through that. I can configure it to... Uh, oh, yeah, see this is the authorization process. You can configure it to auto-add hashtags to each of your posts, so you can always have hashtag your tournament name or anything like that. And the various options are to post match results, in which case when you finally pick a winner for a match, it'll alert the Twitter feed about the result of that match. You can configure it to post images of your brackets every 5, 10, you can choose however many minutes it takes to post them. You can have it uh, post the results of an event once it's fully done. It'll post the top three winners and how much money they made, all using the data from the program. And you finally, you can go to your Stations tab and pick out a station to check this box here so that any time you schedule a match on that station, your Twitter will be alerted to that fact. So why would you use this? Well, if you have a TV that you're streaming off of, any time you schedule a match there, your Twitter is going to be updated and your followers will see right away, hey, this big match between Ken and Hugo is going to come up on the stream next. I should hop on the stream and check it out. So that's the TO Pro Twitter integration. A third new feature is the ability to score matches using different criteria than before. In the old TO, we just assumed that all matches were a best of series. And even though you didn't have to enter the results to reflect that, it was still an assumption that the program made. Now, we're going to let you score your matches however you like. Down here, when you before you create a bracket, you can choose to score your matches just by picking a winner, in which case, as in the double elimination bracket, you just see yellow dots any time that you select a winner. It doesn't have to show anything about the scores. <coughs> or you can choose to score your matches by points, like you would do in a sporting event. You can have high score or, low score, win high score or low score wins. 
for basketball, for golf, for baseball, for any other tournament that uses points, even a DDR tournament or another video game where it's not just who wins, who loses, but the number of points you score. <coughs> you can also set up a best of series where you can configure the number of games in each match. You can also choose to score individual games by points just by picking winners. It's a way for you to record even more data in the program. Of course, this is extensible. In the future, we'll put out a version that allows you to do uh, golf-based scoring or tennis-based scoring, uh, things that are more complicated. But again, it's all extensible. It's all very convenient. And I'll just show you an example. Um, I go here. I have my best of three series in a tournament, in a single elimination tournament. Jacqueline beats Neil 2-1. to one. And now I could actually pick out the scores for the three games, because I said that I wanted uh, each game to be scored by points as well. So it's going to verify that it makes sense. Jacqueline wins 2-1. to one. Those scores have been recorded. She progresses into the tournament. Um, I can change, actually. Oops. The program isn't going to force me to make each match the same. If I wanted to, I can say that Champ won 3 and Hugo won 2, which would make it, of course, a best of 5 series. It doesn't match that first round match between Jacqueline and Neil being best of 3, but Tier Pro is not going to get in your way if you decide that you really want to do this. Many tournaments like Major League Gaming have variable number of matches in each round, depending on previous results from earlier in the tournament. So we're not going to get in your way. If you really want to do this, please go ahead. You'll also notice that because of that, we're not going to ask you how many games are in the winner's finals, how many games are in the grand finals. You just put in the results however they make sense to you and to your tournament, and we're going to accept it just fine. We showed you round robin brackets a little bit earlier. That bracket has been set up with just simple winner-loser uh, scoring, so you don't have to record a total number of games in the set if there wasn't one. If this is a single winner-lose, and that scenario works very well with this scoring. But if you did want to use a more traditional play three games, record, best of three kind of thing, you can set up a best of series for your uh, for your round robin brackets. You can change the number of games in each set, just like before. Create the bracket now when Neil beats Mango. You just record the number of matches that each player won or lost as uh, this the game went down. So this is more what you would do before in TO Pro. You just now have the option of ignoring that in favor of simply doing winners and losers. As a fourth feature, we're going to talk about keeping track of the status of your entrance across your events. Here you see my example double elimination bracket. I've got a match between Champ and Joe on the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and assign that to a station. Now if I jump over to my single elimination bracket where Champ and Joe are both enrolled in this bracket, you'll see that both of them have this italicized reddish color to their name, which indicates that that player is already playing right now in another event at this tournament. This is great for tournaments where you're running both singles and doubles of a particular game at the same time, and you've got people who are entered into both, and you're trying to keep track of who's playing already so you don't schedule them in two different events at the same time. If I go ahead and try and schedule Hugo and Champ, in my single elimination bracket, I get a notification, we'll talk about these in a minute, that says that Champ is already busy, he's playing in the other event, he should probably rethink scheduling this match. Other status events that I can do is by selecting a match, I can say that Sean is away from the tournament. He needs to go out and make a phone call or get some lunch. I'm going to give him half an hour to come back. Now Sean's name is similarly italicized, and in half an hour I'm going to get a notification that Sean needs to have returned by now. The program's going to remind me. I can then go see if he's here or not, or I can just resume calling his matches and leave it up to him to make it to his match on time before he's disqualified. Speaking of disqualifications, if you need to remove someone from a tournament because they're leaving or because they've done something to uh, disqualify them, you can just set their status to disqualified. Now they'll automatically lose all future matches. If they're in another event, which Mango has also entered into my single elimination bracket, I can choose to disqualify him from that event as well. I'm going to be merciful in this case and allow him to go on. But now Jacqueline automatically wins, um, and we see that from now on, Mango is out. He can't uh, win any matches. The program won't let you do that until you set his status back to normal. So that's just an example of how TO is going to keep track of the current status of your players. This is something that, as we get further on into plugin development, people are going to be able to extend this functionality and add new status remarks 
and uh, other stuff. It's just another way to keep track of what's going on at your tournament. Make sure you're always aware of where people are, what they're doing in ways that the old TO didn't let you do. You've probably already noticed our final feature. It's the little messages that keep popping up at the bottom of the screen that you probably wanted me to click on all this time. This is TO Pro's new notification system. It's a way of alerting you to events that are going on in, in your tournament that you need to be call your attention to without interrupting the flow of your tournament. We're not going to pop up a window that blocks everything else anymore. We're going to send you a little message down in the lower left. So the first time you ever run the program, it's going to give you this little click me. It's going to give you an intro about uh, welcome to TO Pro, get some tutorials for new users, or let you know as an experienced user what's new. It's going to link to this video, kind of a self-referential thing. Whoa. Um, otherwise, you'll never see that ever again unless you go to the help menu and go to welcome to TO Pro. Other messages that you're going to see, well, let's see an example. If I uh, go ahead and schedule Champ versus Joe on this event and go over here and I try to schedule Champ to be in a second match, we're going to see that player is already busy notification. It flashes a couple times, it beeps, and now when I click it, it's going to give me some information. Champ is already playing a match in another event. Entrants that are already playing are specially marked on bracket viewers, typically with a red italicized name. I can click on the two events that Champ is scheduled in, and it'll cycle through them. <coughs> and it's just telling me, hey, you need to call attention to this. If you don't care, you just close it, right-click to dismiss it, and you go on your way. Other notifications you'll get are will be in double elimination brackets. If you have a double jeopardy situation where a player is facing up against someone they've already played in the tournament, and you can avoid it with some clever swaps, the program will let you know. It'll let you know when a new version is available, when new plugins are available all kinds of little no notifications that you'll see pop up every now and then. It's just a way to get some more information to you as a tournament organizer without getting in the way of actually running your tournament. Okay, so that's our walkthrough. Thanks for sticking with me. It was a little longer than I expected. Uh, we hope you like the new version of TO Pro. We think it's going to bring a lot to the table for tournament hosts that other programs just can't even come close to doing. If you want to give us some feedback, please visit us at topro.com. We have some forums or a contact form that you can fill out. Let us know. Uh, we'd love to hear what you think about the program and any ideas you have for improving it. Thanks.